Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar on what surrogacy or egg donation program is right for me, um, put on by Circle Surrogacy and Egg Donation. Um, today, uh, just to go brief through our agenda, what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the different programs that Circle offers. We're going to talk a little bit about the timeline of a surrogacy journey. We're going to talk a little bit on the background on Circle and what it's like to work with us as an agency. And we're going to talk on kind of the first steps and um, there's any questions out there, we're happy to answer them. Uh, before we begin, just a little background on what happens during this podcast, or this not podcast, but webinar. Um, you are going to be in listen only mode the whole, the whole time, uh, which means you can't verbally ask questions. Uh, there is a question panel on the right side, should you have any. Um, you can enter your questions at any time during the broadcast, and we'll get to them at the end. Um, we are recording this webinar and we'll email it out to everyone who registered. So if for some reason you weren't able to attend or uh, you have to leave early, uh, you'll get a copy of it. So if you ask a question early on, it'll get answered later um, and you'll be able to, to hear that, that response. Um, so you'll hear from two speakers today. I'm Dean Hutchison. I'm the Vice President of Legal Services and an attorney at Circle Surrogacy and Egg Donation, also an attorney at the Weltman Law Group. Um, and you'll also hear from Lauren Enterkin, who's our parent intake manager at Circle um, Surrogacy and Egg Donation. So between us, we'll give you kind of an overview of Circle and the processes and programs we have. Um, so just to get going, to give you a little background on um, Circle Surrogacy. Uh, so Circle's been around now for about 25 years, um, and our founder, John Weltman, founded it after he had had his second child through surrogacy with his husband, Cliff. Uh, and basically, they envisioned Circle in kind of the same light of their own journey where um, they really wanted this kind of open, transparent, relationship-based surrogacy process. Um, and that's kind of really how we built Circle out and how we've continued to operate it. Um, you know, some of the positives or the benefits to working with an agency like Circle is, you know, number one, that security and expertise. So we are what's called um, a professional full-service agency in that we have a lot of the different pieces of the journey uh, all included in our program. So we have the ability to find egg donors, to find surrogates. We have social work team. We have a legal team. We have an accounting team. We have um, all these different pieces, coordination team, um, so that you can use this almost as a one-stop shop. You don't have to go outside. Um, we have insurance and legal expertise in-house. We have now, I believe, 10 licensed attorneys on staff, um, where you'll have an attorney who's kind of overseeing your case from start to finish. Um, and you'll have specific individualized legal plans for your case, depending on what your specific needs are. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have licensed clinical social workers in. We have a very thorough screening process for our parents and our surrogates um, to make sure you're right for the program and, uh, uh, and the surrogate's right for the program. Um, we offer fixed fee programs that kind of give you a security from a cost standpoint where you'll know, you know upfront what you're paying and what it's going to cost. Uh, worst case scenarios are all kind of included in that program. Um, and then you have a dedicated coordination team who's helping um, kind of liaise between all the different departments as well as the third parties involved to make your process as seamless and smooth as, as can be. Um, experience is the other, uh, one of the other big things. We've In our last 25 years, we've had over 2,300 children born to this program. So we've kind of seen it all, including a giant worldwide global pandemic to work through. Um, you know, and I think, but more important about all the different professionals that we have on staff and all the different departments, but um, you know, we have lots of people that have experienced infertility or gone through surrogacy, uh, either as a parent or a surrogate on our staff. So we have lots of different people with that kind of connection and that empathy towards our parents, our surrogates, our donors, because they've, they've walked the same path that many of you have walked. Um, as mentioned earlier, we've kind of seen and worked through almost everything you can uh, from a surrogacy perspective. Um, and then lastly, you'll have lots of support throughout this process. We have intended parent support, including Facebook groups, social work teams, meetup groups, reunions, uh, different support groups tailored to different variables of intended parents, whether it's cancer survivors, single parents, certain regions. Um, and then we also have very thorough surrogate support um, with licensed clinical social workers following surrogates throughout the process um, and Facebook groups of former and current surrogates so they can discuss you know, issues that are happening. So that's kind of a general background on Circle. So the programs that we offer 
um, intended parents are gestational surrogacy only, gestational surrogacy with egg donation, egg donation only, uh, surrogacy where you're bringing your own surrogate, uh, sibling journeys, which is when you're coming back for a, a sibling for the first child you had through this process, um, or a dual journey, which is uh, a journey where you start two at the same time, um, but they are staggered, so you're not having deliveries you know, within a certain time frame of each other. So we'd like to make sure that you're not starting one until you're pregnant with another. Um, uh, the cost, so you know, we're one of the only agencies that offer really a full fixed fee price option, um, at least for the services we provide. Uh, you know, there's still going to be third-party things like the medical piece that's needed, um, but you can also get that on a fixed basis too with many clinics we work with. Um, and really, you know, it's it's there's a the, the the goal at the end and why we created the two programs we created is that we want as many people as possible to kind of get to that end line without major cost issues. Uh, so maybe everyone's paying a little extra, but no one's getting hit with some huge giant bill at the end of the process where they have to come up um, with a bunch of costs to continue on or they have to leave the program. This way, everyone's kind of pitching in on some mutual shared risk that, you know, worst case scenario is you have the perfect journey. Um, but you paid a little extra in best case scenario, which not really the best case, but you have you know, a couple big hiccups in the road that would have cost you 60, 70,000 to continue, but instead you just paid that upfront cost uh, at the beginning. Uh, so the main thing before you get going is you just have to figure out what program is right for you. And you have to figure out, you know, do you need a donor and a surrogate? Can you create your own embryos? Do you have embryos already frozen that you want to use? Um, do you have a friend or family member that is willing to carry, but you'd still like the support from Circle or some of the screening? Um, and have you, you know, already been working with your fertility doctors to figure out what your options are? Um, you know, if you're not sure what you need, you can always reach out to us in advance. You can have a kind of initial call without having a full consultation to see what program might be best for you. Um, or maybe it just comes out during that full consultation that you thought you could do X, but based on that, um, you know, individualized uh, uh, discussion with the circle people you find out all right maybe I'm right for the surrogacy and egg donation and I, I need to create I need an egg donor or some assistance um, so the first thing we'll talk about a little bit and I'll turn it over to Lauren is our gestational surrogacy only program thanks Dean um, and as Dean mentioned for those that aren't quite sure which program is right for them even after this um, webinar I'm usually the point of contact that intended parents are connected to to help explore your circumstances situation and what the right path is for yourself so please feel free to reach out to myself anytime after this um, for GS only that is for parents that are able to create embryos or have found another alternative source for an egg donor and strictly want to use circle for using a gestational carrier. Um, many heterosexual couples fall into this category of those that um, can use their own biology. Again, they just can't carry safely. Um, we work with a lot of cancer survivors. We actually have fellow staff members who are cancer survivors and parents through the program. Um, a lot of times it's advised to do retrieval prior to going through treatment um, and post-treatment a lot of intended parents can't carry so then again you use us for surrogacy as opposed to the donor. Same-sex couples, similar scenario, you could use an alternative source um, for your egg donation whether it be another agency, your fertility doctor, um, if you're using only one partner's biology maybe it's the opposing partner's family member of some kind so there's a lot of options for the egg donor source. Once you have found your source, if you have an IVF clinic where you want your embryos created, wherever the, um, wherever the IVF clinic is established is typically where the carrier would go for medical screening and transfer. If you're not yet established with an IVF clinic, we're happy to provide you recommendations. Um, so again, even if you just wanna to come to us for surrogacy um, and you haven't created embryos, that's okay. We're happy to talk to you about your options. Thanks. So cost-wise, we have two programs that we offer at Circle. One's called Fixed Cost, one's called Journey Protection. Um, and basically, the way they differ is fixed is you pay basically a set cost. You have a transfer. If that transfer is successful, you're covered for the rest of the pregnancy and delivery. You're not paying anything else except for things that are outside um, uh, the usual kind of cost. Um, journey protection, on the other hand, basic, oh, and go back to that. If you have a failed transfer or a miscarriage in that program, um, you would just pay a flat 10,000 in kind of 
seed cost to get back started with the process again with that surrogate or new surrogate, um, regardless of how much had been spent. Um, and you do that each successive time. So it's, you know, it takes three transfers, it's going to be an extra 20,000. A journey protection guarantee program, on the other hand, basically pays an upfront cost of 8,500, um, allows you basically as many transfers as you want. Uh, until you have a live child, or if you get to five embryo transfers and you haven't had success with bringing home a live child, uh, you can terminate your contract with Circle and get the portion of the fee that's related to the agency back as a refund. So it's a kind of built-in protection. Um, so the numbers here are the kind of estimate number of what the overall cost would be. Um, it is subject a little bit to the surrogate's actual base fee. So uh, this is basing it on our kind of normal average cost of a surrogate's base fee, um, but if that surrogate's base fee is a little higher, then the overall cost will be a little higher. Um, and this does not include IVF costs, so you're going to have to add in whatever your IVF numbers are. Um, it also won't include um, the cost of the baby's medical bills at the hospital, which is just a function of your own insurance, which may be zero for many of you or some small deductible, uh, but those are really the two things to factor in that are outside. Uh, of our fixed and our journey protection. Um, so the next is gestational surrogacy with egg donation. I'll turn it back to Lauren. Yeah, so uh, again, with surrogacy, um, you can use us for that service, but add egg donation on. Um, now, we talked about not knowing which path is right for certain intended parents. If you join us for just surrogacy, you can always add egg donation and make it a GSED program at any time. Um, but this would be for parents who need us for both services. Our egg donor database is public and free to register for. Um, you can find donors based on all the genetics you're looking for, height, ethnicity, eye color, lots of filters you can set. When you're in the database, you can look for different information um, pertaining to proven fertility history and other um, aspects you're looking for in a donor. The surrogacy program, again, would be pretty standard and Dean will go over how that reflects in cost, but essentially you're utilizing full services. I mentioned in the previous slide that we have a cancer survivor here at Circle. Um, she actually used a surrogate and an egg donor. Um, so again, for those that are just trying to learn more about others' experiences, going through both, um, we do have those resources. Thanks. Um, so yeah, so the added cost here is basically the cost of the egg donor program, uh, then the egg donors kind of fees and expenses to um, uh, use their services. Um, again, these numbers are, are not static they can change a little again based on the surrogate's fee or the donor's fee if it's a little higher than the average cost we estimate um, uh, and those costs will happen whether you use us for egg donation or you use a third party egg donor. You, know, you could always find a donor on your own outside of circle and you're still going to have costs associated with the egg donors fees and expenses and the um, egg donor agency fee um, so basically around 150,000 for the fixed program with you know that additional 10 each time you need a transfer or around 100 58, 160,000 for the journey protection program, um, where you can have, again, as many transfers, you can have free rematches with donors as well if necessary, um, if you run out of embryos. But uh, those are the basic costs of those two programs. Um, we also have egg donation only, which I'll let Lauren jump in again. Yeah, so just touched upon this a little bit, um, but just to elaborate a little bit more, again, if you don't want to use us for surrogacy, you could use us strictly for egg donation. Again, the database is public and free to register for. Parents can start looking at donors as early as today. Um, granted, you cannot use the buttons or functionalities on the database, um, so do not try to add someone to your profile until you're an active client, but you can still see all information. Um, again, back to the proven fertility history, for those that may want to work with a donor who's had successful retrievals and successful pregnancies as a result of those retrievals, um, that is information we'll have if we are working with experienced donors. Um, one thing about Circle as well is that we offer different relationship options. Most donor banks or agencies are a lot of times anonymous. We offer anonymous, semi-known, and known options. This allows intended parents to either choose um, to have no communication with their donor, to have some level of maybe a gray area of communication with their donor during the matching process, and then the option of having a very open-ended and very communicative relationship with their donor. Um, so just note, we do offer three options, and what donors are open to is usually listed on their profiles. Um, and in short, once you've selected a donor, the agency will handle all arrangements from there to have her go to the IVF clinic you've chosen to do medical screening and when it's time to do her egg retrieval. Um, typically, donors take injections locally to themselves, again, but retrieval, embryo creation will all happen at the clinic of the parent's choice. Great. 
Thanks, Lauren. Um, so the cost for the ED program um, range somewhere in the 25 to 30,000 range, uh, exclusive of the IVF clinic. Um, and that's basically, again, depending on the, the range, depends on what the donor's fee is. Um, most of our donors are in that nine to 10,000 range, but there are donors that can be higher depending on uh, variables like experience or their backgrounds. Um, uh, you know, that's going to include all of her costs for travel. It's going to include costs for um, uh, companion expenses to go to travel. All those things are locked in in the agency fee and the donor. So it's everything all in um, for the program itself. Um, so the, the final, I think, one that we go through is bringing a surrogate um, to the program. So it's whether you found someone independently who you didn't know prior and you just want that added protection or it's a family member or friend and you want to still work with the agency. Um, so I'll let Lauren jump in on those, those different programs. Yeah, so um, as Dean mentioned, they're fairly new. Um, for those that, and this is actually a really advantageous option for those that are trying to weigh financial feasibility um, because with Bringing your own surrogate to the program, you have fixed, essential, and a la carte um, cost options, which again, Dean will break down a little bit more in detail. But as we've gone over in the previous slides, a fixed cost program is what's standard for all journeys using our surrogates. If you're bringing a surrogate to the table um, or to the program that is personal to yourselves, the relationship and dynamic will be a little bit different, which allows us to give you a more variable option for intended parents, again, that want to negotiate maybe, maybe less escrow account fees, less legal fees, um, less insurance fees, there's various areas where we can offer more variable cost options. Um, the difference is what level liability the agency is taking on financially versus what liability the intended parent is taking on financially. Um, so bring your own surrogate, again, can be really cost advantageous, but again, there's some risk factor there, which Dean will probably go over a little bit in the cost breakdown. Yeah, so basically the way the programs work, um, one is is almost like you're just doing our full program and you're getting a discount because you find, you kind of the finder's fee associated with finding the surrogate. So it includes all agency fees, it includes legal, it includes um, surrogates fees, support, accounting, escrow, insurance costs, all those things. The only thing we take out is obviously the finder's fee. Um, you can add the journey protection guarantee to that program too. You can do it through fix. Um, and basically, you're having the full agency port, uh, support from the time of sign-on until birth. Um, so this obviously just gives you more protection that if that match doesn't work through and you want to continue on in the process, um, you know, you're going to be, you can just be part of Circle's matching program and you'll get matched with a sur surrogate we found after your breakdown happens. Um, the second, the essential, is just more of um, you, you're basically paying a cost to kind of manage the process. Um, uh, the insurance costs, the um, legal costs to do the contracts, things like that. Um, everything else, though, is going to be variable. So, you know, the medical piece, um, things like that, you might have to pay extra for. So, this is about 40000 in professional fees. Um, and then you're paying the surrogates costs, you're paying the insurance on your own. You know, and it may be that she has insurance and those costs are low, or you're just buying a third party plan. Um, you can, uh, can't add the journey protection one to this because you're taking certain things on your own, but you can do it through the fixed fee. At least the professional services are fixed. Uh, so if you needed another match with a surrogate, you wouldn't have to pay coordination costs and circles fee again, but you would have to pay surrogates fee back into the program uh, and other things. Um, and again, this would give you um, support from the agency from sign on until birth. Um, the last one is really just um, uh, circle kind of covering from an a la carte basis, um, the screening costs for your surrogate um, uh, and uh, some of that initial support and get you through contracts. So basically it helps you uh, coordinate the journey and screen the surrogate to get to a transfer. Um, and if you need a second transfer or a third transfer, but once you're pregnant, you're kind of on your own. So you're signing on your own escrow, you're finding your own surrogate insurance, you're working with attorneys um, uh, for the parentage, things like that on your own, uh, but you will get some of that professional screening, background checks, things like that done by Circle so you feel safer with your surrogate. So, um, you know, it obviously depends on what you're looking for in terms of protection, in terms of 
um, you know, having assistance throughout the process of using Circle's kind of professional help, or you just really want us to help screen and get you to a transfer, and then um, you're kind of willing to take the rest of the process on your own. Um, so the other things are programs are dual and sibling journeys. So I, I kind of mentioned in front, what a dual journey is, is when um, particularly parents want to have two children close in age and they don't um, really want to go for twins because of the added um, potential issues with twins, um, uh, but they would like the kids as close as possible. So in this way, what we do at Circle is we allow people to sign on for both. We allow them to match with surrogate one, go through the process, do a transfer, and then once pregnant, um, they can then um, you know, match with their second surrogate so that there is like a four to six month time frame between um, uh, between the births of the children because we don't want you to have you know a surrogate in Kansas and a surrogate in Missouri and then all well, those are close states I should you know, a surrogate in California a surrogate in North Carolina that are both due within two weeks of each other and suddenly you know not only is your kind of emotions and your attention split throughout the entire journey because you have two surrogates going on two different coasts uh, but then the babies are born and you have you know split up as parents in a sense to go to one or, or both so uh, we like to you know build in some protections for all the parties and i think it uh, creates a better relationship too between you and your surrogate when you're not divided between two cases going on at the same time um, the sibling journey is more when after you've had your first child um, you come back uh, for a second child either with that first surrogate if medically she's cleared and your relationship um, was good and you want to work with each other again um, that's usually what most sibling journeys happen as, but um, if your surrogate's unavailable for some reason or another, or you didn't have the, the best experience and you want a different surrogate for your second journey, um, uh, you can come back and there are discounts for both, uh, depending on whether it's the same surrogate or it's a, uh, a new surrogate. Um, so the last is kind of the timeline for a journey, just so you know from your information. So basically, it's broken down into from when you sign on until you're home. Um, right now, from when you sign on until you match with a surrogate is about seven months. Um, certain requirements can drastically decrease that. Certain requirements can increase it. Really, the only thing that's decreasing matching time right now is if an intended parent um, doesn't ever intend to terminate a pregnancy for any reason so if we have a parent that comes in with with that specific uh, uh, guideline and there's lots of surrogates that apply that would not terminate a pregnancy for any reason and they tend to be either put on hold or they match somewhere else if we don't have a parent in that stage um, but we have seen it you know obviously if we have parents with that that thought process um, matching pretty quickly um, so you so during that time frame though you're not really doing nothing if you haven't created embryos you're finding a donor um, if you don't need a donor, you're doing the IVF process. So a good you know, three to four months is taken up with um, clinic choices, with donor choices and things like that. Uh, creating your profile, working with your team just to create you know, the best thing to put out there when <clears throat> it is time for a match. Um, from the match takes about two to three months and it can take a little longer depending on your clinic. So you don't want to speak directly to your IVF clinic on how long it takes from match to transfer. Um, but basically you're going and negotiating the legal contract between you and the surrogate. Um, if you haven't completed embryo creation, you're doing that. You're doing medical screenings at the clinic for the surrogate. Um, and then the surrogate is beginning her cycle meds to get ready for that first transfer. Um, transfer occurs. Uh, if that transfer works, um, you're pregnant. Uh, so now you have a nine month period, which um, is exciting and at the same time can be a little boring because not much is occurring in a sense. Um, uh, you know, the, the surrogate's going for her monthly visits to her OBGYN, you'll be getting updates, um, and but at home you're, you're kind of gearing up for the process. You're um, uh, you know, getting a, a nursery ready, things like that. Um, during that time frame, we'll start to um, do legal work to establish your parentage rights. Um, we'll prep the hospital for birth, create birth plans. A uh, social worker will be supporting your carrier throughout that process, and you're just kind of building on that relationship. Um, if things are back to normal, hopefully, knock on wood, uh, usually intended parents go out to visit their surrogate sometime during the pregnancy, usually you know, to be there for a big scan or at least just to get some time to um, meet her family and just get a little acclimated to the area where you'll be for the birth. Um, 
then we get to birth. Um, obviously, uh, very exciting time. Uh, usually, parents come in a couple of days or so prior to the expected due date. Um, you know, uh, usually legal work is done in advance or immediately after birth, but you're treated no different at the hospital than, um, you know, uh, whether you have that pre or post birth order, you're going to be treated as the parents. Um, at the hospital, you're filling out birth certificate worksheets, you're filling out um, uh, social security worksheets, you're getting discharged, um, and you can travel home as immediate as can be. Obviously, if you're an international parent watching this, um, it might take a little longer to get home because you got to do passports. You may need to do something with your home country, uh, but domestic parents can be home, uh, you know, within a couple of days of birth should they wish. Um, you don't really need much to travel via airplane, and if you're going by your own car, you don't need anything. Um, so you're looking somewhere 19 to 22 months start to finish. Um, you know, I would hope that potentially the matching time comes down a little as we get a little further away from. Um, really the worst part of the pandemic. Uh, we definitely saw a decrease in surrogate applications over the last year or so. Not not a huge, but definitely numbers that you know, increased our match time a little. Um, and I think it's just because people have been a little wary of traveling and obviously surrogates have to travel to get to and from the clinics for um, transfers and screenings. And also everyone's kind of been, you know, having a lot to do at home with kids being out of school and homeschooling that it's just been that added burden. So hopefully as we get to the fall, um, there's more and more of a lift on some of those restrictions and that, um, uh, that will increase the numbers. So lastly, um, you know, if after today and after listening to this um, webinar, you wanna take that next step, um, you can always do a free consultation with Circle. Um, we do them Monday through Friday and usually uh, one weekend a month. Um, they're all virtual at the moment, either through Skype or Zoom. Um, you're going to speak to two people. Usually you're going to speak to someone from the process side who's going to talk about what, what the surrogacy process is like from a day-to-day -day expectation. Um, it's usually someone who's had experience in the process too, so they'll kind of walk you through their own experience. Um, and then you'll also talk to someone from the legal side who will speak to you specifically about insurance, your, the legal process associated with your variables, as well as the cost breakdown. Um, you know, you can ask obviously any questions you want on those. Um, they're very good. Hopefully, hopefully in the fall or winter or maybe next year, we'll get back to doing some in person as well, because it is nice to do those in person, but uh, we're obviously abiding by the best practices at the moment. Um, so to schedule them, you can go to our website or you can reach out to Lauren uh, directly. Her email is on there, lnterkin at circlesurrogacy.com and her phone number is there as well. Um, uh, and we, we hope to, you know, that many of you that, that tuned in today and that um, hear this after when it's posted, um, we'll take that time to reach out and we'll get to meet with you and um, have a consultation. Um, so I don't see any questions out there. If there are any, you can pick away, but otherwise um, we'll let you have your Wednesday back. Um, thank you for taking the time to listen and we hope to hear from some of you in the future. Thanks so much, everyone. All right. Have a good day, everybody.